I mean, I really have to say I love the ATM Mini that I have right here on my desk for the production of these videos. But as I've been playing around with this and learning more and more about it, I also found a couple of the little weirdnesses going on with this device where I'm not really sure why these things are happening or also what is going on with the Blackmagic Design team in terms of why they come up with these issues or why those issues aren't fixed yet. Now in this video specifically, I wanna tackle the situation with an external monitor like I have here, the MacBook Pro going into one of the HDMI ports on the Blackmagic ATM Mini, and then it looks like this. Now, this might be a little bit hard to demonstrate because it's not necessarily all that obvious what is going on there. Now, if I put the screen here in the little corner right there and then switch to this camera where you see these two screens side by side, you might be able to kind of gauge that this screen here so shows a very different image than the screen that you see here, which is recorded via the HDMI port coming from the MacBook being mirrored into the ATM Mini. Now what you see in the ATM Mini, however, and if I switch these two out, you can see the big picture here is much, much darker than what I see on the Retina display of the MacBook Pro. And this is throughout all kinds of different monitors that I have tested. So it's not just a difference between the internal monitor and the ATM Mini and or something similar. But luckily there's actually a fix for the situation. It's really easy to do. You just have to remember to do it whenever you want to do some kind of screen recording. And screen recording is in my opinion, one of the huge benefits of something like the ATM mini, specifically the ISO models where you can outsource all the screen recording duties to that mirrored display essentially. But I have learned this fix from YouTube, so I'm gonna link a couple sources in the description down below. I'm not the first one to figure this out. I have tested whether or not this makes actually sense and if it actually fixes the issue. But I want to share this with you here as well, as I am raving so much about this device, but I don't necessarily think that these kind of situations should be happening. So this is an appeal to Blackmagic Design to fix these types of things and hopefully with future versions. But as far as I know, this is something that is still the same with the Extreme ISO, for example. But now for the quick fix here, we are gonna go onto the screen right here. You're gonna go onto the Apple icon on your Mac, then to System Preferences. And right here, we can go to Display. And can you see how too dark all of this looks. If you have a Mac and you're used to how the interface looks, this is definitely not the way that it should look as I have, uh, as I see this here on the screen. It just is way darker than on the inbuilt display. Now the internal display of the Mac is actually capable of displaying a color, color space called P3. However, I do think that that simply is not the case for the ATM mini. And with that back here, we can go into the display settings. So when you're in the system preferences, go to display down there. And then when you have that open, you open up the one that is called BMD HDMI, and that is for the external HDMI screen. And I want to have this be the main screen, so to say. So basically we wanna change the setting here and not on the internal built-in display because we want this HDMI monitor, the Blackmagic Design one, to be our main monitor that everything else is basically oriented based on. Now you can see I have currently set this to 720p, so I have everything nice and big for you in the video. You might wanna choose 1080p or even 1080i. Uh, that depends on your setup. But now let's go into the color area and here we want to choose something different. Now it's probably going to look something like this with the display profile being just two of them or maybe even just one of them. However, we can change this by going into the show profile for this display only and uncheck that box and then you open up a whole different menu of different profiles essentially. Now, why exactly I have hundreds of these here, I am not necessarily sure. However, if you scroll all the way down, or at least for me, it's all the way down, there's one that is called SMPTE RP, and then 
something number DCI P3. And if I change to that, look at how the colors that you see in the screen recording here completely change. So now with that, we have this changed. And in my opinion and in my tests, this is pretty close to what I usually see on the monitor internally on the MacBook. So this now displays those colors very nicely in the screen recording. However, now if I switch to my other camera here and I put the display into the picture in picture, you can see on this main screen here, now everything looks washed out. And I don't have a fix for that. Probably there is not really a fix for that because essentially what is going on here is that the internal display and the external monitor are both having the same signal. And with that, they also use the same color space, which is now set up here for this one right here. And of course, that's not going to be the correct one for the internal display. However, I have to say, I am absolutely willing to make that sacrifice to look at a bit of a weird looking screen, so to say, and see this here on my monitor, but in the screen recording, that's the one that I care about, that's the important one, and that looks much more correct this way. Now that's already the fix. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, I have not figured this out by myself. I will put links in the description of people that are also describing this fix. And I would hope that ATM or Blackmagic Design rather would make the color profile for this monitor properly work just by default and not need this specific setting. But again, if you know how to do it, you can just make sure that you change that color profile. And usually if you use a very specific setup that is just set up, it usually should remember this setting and just make it so every time you plug in this kind of display or the HDMI cable to your Mac. Now with all that said, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. That always helps out. If you have questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below or join my Discord server, also linked in the description below. If you wanna get yourself a ATM Mini or the control surface that I am using here, which is the Behringer X-Touch Mini, which I'm building a tool for so you can control the ATM Mini and much more with this MIDI control surface, then you can of course find links in the description below, which are affiliate links helping me make more videos like this possible. Now with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.